Who are the best linebackers in the NFL today? In this video, I give you my top 20 linebackers in the NFL going into the 2020 NFL season. Before I give you my list of the best off the ball linebackers in today's NFL, Gronk spike the like button, subscribe to the bottom line view for more NFL rankings just like this, and comment below your opinion on who you believe is the best linebacker in the NFL today and who you have in your top 20. After all, this is just my opinion on who the best linebackers are. Let me know yours in the comment section below. Kicking off the top 20 at number 20 is the Houston Texans, Zach Cunningham. Cunningham is one of the best one-dimensional linebackers in the game today. And what I mean by one-dimensional is he is possibly the game's best run-defending linebacker having led the league in 2019 with run stops, coming up, making a play, shedding blocks, great tackler in space. But when it came to coverage, Cunningham has struggled throughout his young career just because he doesn't have the athleticism, the quickness side to side, the agility, and the range of other linebackers higher on this list to be excellent in coverage. But when it comes to the running game, it really doesn't get any better than Cunningham. And it's not to say that he's awful in coverage, but he just stands out as a run defender compared to his range in coverage. If he does get better in that area, he might actually jump into the top 15 or even top 10 linebackers in the game. At number 19, a breakout linebacker from the 2019 NFL season, Alexander Johnson of the Denver Broncos. This is a player that some of you might be saying like, who is that? Alexander Johnson? Never heard of him. Well, the Denver Broncos, they did have the number one red zone defense in 2019. Big reason for that was Alexander Johnson's effort as a linebacker, his ability as a tackler, and his power. Alexander Johnson almost reminds me of a New England Patriot linebacker, like a high tower. He has that same sort of skill set. He kind of looks similar. Maybe it's the dreads, I'm not sure. But he's big, he's stocky, he's more powerful than anything. But he also showed that he has range and coverage. He for a younger player is actually pretty dynamic as a linebacker in terms of he reads a play very well, he recognizes something and he attacks it, he plays with reckless abandon and that's what you love to see from your linebacker position in all areas of the game. Johnson showed all the skills that could make him one of the 10 best linebackers pretty quickly in the NFL. At number 18, speaking of young studs at the linebacker position, Devin Bush of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bush has a very rare skill set. He's actually pretty short for a linebacker. I believe he's like six foot, maybe even under that. But he has incredible speed, incredible agility, and extreme dynamic range as a cover linebacker. You saw this guy last season and his ability to carry slot receivers and receivers down the seam of their defense in like a cover two shell. This guy can play all the way back like a safety in coverage, and he has such great pursuit and just immediate burst as a linebacker to play the run. He is very good at finding his way through the trash and making tackles for the Pittsburgh defense. And you saw his immediate impact on this Pittsburgh defense. The one guy that they were missing was that rangy linebacker like the Ryan Shazier that they had a couple of seasons ago that had the speed, agility, and burst to be able to make plays at the second level. And Bush combines that incredible range as a cover guy, the speed, and the intelligence as a run defender. I think this guy is going to be special. He just hasn't gained the experience yet. So he did show in moments that he was caught out of position due to sometimes he's just over doing something. He's, he's going in the wrong direction too quickly. And then he would have to try and climb back into the right position, but he's so athletic that sometimes he can get away with it. That speaks to when he gets there, when he gets down the NFL offenses of this league, as he was later in the season, he is going to be one of the 10 to 12, maybe even top five linebackers in the game. At number 17, from one Devin to the other Devin, Devin White of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That combination in Tampa is extremely scary because Devin White found his game in the last half of the season and you saw the Bucs defense benefit because of it. Devin White has so much potential because he's Devin Bush and what I just stated about his range in coverage, plus he's big, he's strong, and he's just a more impressive specimen 
than Devin Bush, but he has the speed, the athleticism of a Devin Bush. It's crazy how high this guy's ceiling is. He is going to be very, very good in all levels of what makes a really good linebacker in today's NFL. At number 16, speaking of ceilings for players, Tremaine Edmonds' ceiling as a linebacker in the NFL today is... I can't even see it. I think it's through the roof, to be honest with you. Tremaine Edmonds is a special athlete. He has extremely long arms, which allows him to bat down passes over the middle. He has that great range, agility, and then he's like huge. The guy looks like Willie McGinnis from the Patriots back in the day. I mean, this guy's an edge body, edge player with the speed and the athleticism of a safety. That's ridiculous. And you could just do so many things with his skill set. He's great in coverage. He can rush the passer as a blitzer. You could probably put him and throw him on the edge if you wanted to on third down, just let him get after the quarterback. And he could probably play safety. Why not? You know, this guy, he might not be there in terms of the football IQ just yet, but because of this skill set, he is going to get drastically better this season because now he's starting to recognize and see offenses and what they're trying to do to him. And once he figures that out, the ceiling is literally through the roof. At number 15, Fred Warner of the San Francisco 49ers. Fred Warner is one of the best cover linebackers in the game today. He is essential to the San Francisco Seattle scheme defense in that zone coverage system. He just has a knack for making a play, seeing and reading the eyes of a quarterback. And we saw him take the next step in his sophomore year, last year in 2019, combining a dynamic duo with Quan Alexander. He's awesome. He's a great tackler in space. He has a ton of range as a cover backer. He can take on tight ends in coverage if need be. The only thing I will say about Warner is he's not the strongest or best in the running game, but when you're so good in coverage in today's NFL, that's the most valuable you can be in today's NFL is stopping and defending the pass. And Warner does that very well. At number 14, speaking of defending the pass, Joe Schobert, now of the Jacksonville Jags, formerly of the Cleveland Browns. This guy is one of the smartest linebackers in the NFL and one of the best coverage linebackers because of it. Schobert was the man that put the Browns defense in the right position. He's the guy that's audibling at the line. He's playing chess versus the opposing quarterback. And I value that a lot at the linebacker position. He's also incredible in coverage because of that recognition, awareness, and study that he has on his game. And really, he has that great athleticism sideline to sideline, the agility, the range. But the real flaw with him is also the same as Fred Warner. Like he's not great at sorting through the trash in the running game and making a play there. But because he's so great in coverage and he's such a smart player, he is so valuable to a modern defense. At number 13, a linebacker that I believe can play in just about in any scheme, at any position, at any spot, and do everything at a high level. Jayon Brown is one of the most underrated linebackers in the game because as he showed last year, he can put up sacks, he can rush the passer. This season, he improved even as a coverage linebacker. He's good in the running game, good agility. He's a really good athlete and a really great linebacker for the Tennessee Titans. I think people sleep on him because he's not a huge name or whatever, and he wasn't drafted super high. I don't really know what it is, but he can cover, he can rush the quarterback, he can tackle in space, and he's perfect for the Mike Vrabel scheme as a blitzer. He's got the speed and the size. I really like Jalen Brown, man. At number 12, Kawan Alexander of the San Francisco 49ers. I do believe Alexander is the better of the two linebackers in San Francisco. And there's two reasons for that. They're both awesome. Don't get me wrong. And I would say that Warner might be slightly better in coverage. But Alexander is just all around really good. He's probably, to me, a more explosive athlete agility, speed, the ability to burst and make a tackle. I think he's better as a run defender. I think because he's the middle linebacker, he is more valuable to that defense. And you saw that the 49ers defense wasn't quite the same when Alexander was not there. And you saw them with him and how great they are. He can also blitz a little bit, as you saw last season, and get after the quarterback. But 
he is just such a explosive linebacker that it makes him great as a run defender to just avoid blockers and then in coverage to be able to fly across the field and make a play on the ball. Kwan Alexander has been one of my favorite underrated linebackers of the past few seasons. And I think he showed you that within a good defense around him, he can really be a great player. At number 11, the 11th best linebacker in the NFL to me is Jamie Collins, formerly of the Patriots, now of the Lions. The Lions are getting a linebacker that is just simply one of the best athletes in the NFL, period, end of story. Jamie Collins, he could do backflips if you want him to, just ask him or look at his Instagram. But Jamie Collins, he combines incredible power, pass rushing capability on the edge with a middle linebacker that can shut down players in coverage and a guy in the running game that simply is so athletic and so strong that he could just move you and throw you out of the way and make a tackle. The thing with Collins has been, he is just such a dynamic athlete that sometimes he just asks himself or tries to do too much and that gets him in trouble. That's really his downside, that he's such an amazing athlete that he just thinks he can simply do anything at any moment at any time. And that isn't always the case. But when you're talking about a complete linebacker that can play in basically any position, middle linebacker, outside linebacker, edge even. He was one of the tops in pressures, hurries at this position because he's a great blitzer, because he has that great size and speed combo, but he also can straight up just pass rush as you saw in New England last year. So he just fits this scheme so well, and I'm thankful that he's back in it rather in New England or Detroit because he is the perfect player for it. Entering the top 10, speaking of Patriots, Dante Hightower has been the resemblance, the embodiment of a Patriot defender over the past decade. Dante Hightower is the perfect Patriot linebacker. Since he was drafted, he has done it all for the New England defense and I think been undervalued for his ability because Hightower, just like Collins, can rush the passer on the edge if you ask him to. Like he can do that easily. He could be an edge defender if you want him to. But he could also be a middle linebacker and he can make plays in the running game, in the passing game. He can cover a little bit. He's not as good of a cover guy as Collins, but I do think he's a better run defender than Collins. And I do think he's slightly smarter, more more intelligent. And for whatever reason, Hightower is just a huge big game player. Like every Super Bowl, every playoff game, Hightower is going to show out and put on a performance. And that's why I do have him ahead of Collins, along with the consistency that he's had over the course of his career. But Man, I love Hightower. I just can't say anything negative about the guy. He's just a spectacular leader, spectacular player, and an all-around do-it-all linebacker. At number nine, Jalen Smith of the Dallas Cowboys. Jalen Smith bouncing back from that injury in college, coming to the NFL and exploding on the scene last season, being invited to the Pro Bowl this year. Jalen Smith, to me, is the leader of the Cowboys defense and an explosive athlete at the linebacker position. He has great size to be able to blitz and burst to be able to see the hole and shoot. And then in coverage, he has enough range to cover tight ends and be the deep zone middle linebacker that you want within that Cowboys scheme. But he pretty much has everything. He's an excellent open field tackler. He's ferocious. He's physical. Jalen Smith has everything it takes to be an upper echelon linebacker. The only thing that he's missing is probably the agility that he used to have when he was younger because of those knees. But man, he's still amazing and to me, a top 10 linebacker. At number eight, Deion Jones of the Atlanta Falcons. Something that Deion Jones is not missing is the agility. He might be the fastest, quickest linebacker in the NFL. And to me, one of the top cover linebackers in the league today. Deion Jones is basically a safety, but plays with the linebacker demeanor. He is physical. He's tough. Don't Just look at his body and be like, oh, this guy's a skinny linebacker out there. No, this guy can hit. This guy can make a play in the running game if he wants to. And he's just so quick and fast that he can just get around linemen or get around tight ends or whoever's trying to block him because he's just so quick. Like his agility sideline to sideline, he is essential to this defense. Whenever he is down or out with injury, which he has been over the course of his career, you see the impact that he has on the team because of his range and coverage, because of his dynamic rare breed of talent and that speed and that athleticism is just irreplaceable for a defensive scheme like Atlanta that asks their linebackers to be basically the most important aspect of what they do. 
At number seven, another guy that is just excellent as a cover linebacker and has really come into his own over the last two seasons. That's Corey Littleton, formerly of the Rams, now of the Raiders. I think this was an excellent signing by the Raiders because it gives them one of the best cover linebackers in the game, a cover linebacker that they've been missing a lot in their defensive scheme for the past couple of years under Gruden. Now they have him and he's just going to allow them to do so much. And he covers up so much in the middle of the field and he's great versus running backs. He's great versus tight ends. He's great versus in the middle of the field, slot receivers, making them pay over the middle. Littleton is a really smart linebacker who can diagnose a play very quickly and he has the athleticism to be able to get there very quickly the reason why i have him slightly ahead of jones is because i do think he's a better tackler pff actually recorded him as not missing a tackle this season which is absolutely incredible considering the amount of snaps he played that's insane at number six cj mosley of the new york jets i know that mosley didn't really play last year But honestly, I don't really care because I know what Mosley offers. And you saw it in week one versus the Bills. This guy is just so smart, so intelligent. He is a leader. That is what you want and what you think of when you think of middle linebackers. You think of a guy that leads the rest of their defense. He's the audible guy. He's the chess guy. He's the guy that's going to go toe-to-toe with the quarterback. He's the guy that's going to put everybody in the right position. He's the guy that's going to make everybody on the defense better. He's the quarterback of the defense. And that's truly what C.J. Mosley is. He doesn't really have a flaw in his game. The only thing I can say is he's not as fast or quick as some of these other linebackers below him, but he is just so smart. He diagnoses at such a high level and he is an incredible run defender. That's why he's here at number six. At number five, still a top five linebacker in the game today, Bobby Wagner of the Seattle Seahawks. Yes, he did take a dip last season, but what can I say about Bobby Wagner? I mean, he can hit like nobody's business. The guy is very smart in coverage and he is excellent in the running game. He even can blitz, although they don't do that a ton in Seattle. He has shown that he's capable of doing so when asked. Bobby Wagner might not be as fast or quick as he once was in his prime, but he's still such a smart linebacker, such a great leader that he does belong in the top five. At number four, Demario Davis of the New Orleans Saints. Honestly, you could argue Davis is number one or number two on this list. I have him at number four because the weakness in his game does lie in the passing game. He isn't the greatest in coverage compared to some of these other guys, which is why I do have him at four. But when it comes to run defending, he might be the best in the league. He is great at shedding blocks. He's also an excellent blitzer. And this is a guy that's just continued to get better over the course of his career. Since his days with the Jets, I mean, he's just continued to every single season, just one step closer to being an elite backer. And he finally got there, in my opinion, in 2019 as one of the five best in the game. At number three, Levante David. Levante David has been probably the most underrated defender in the league over the past decade. He has been an awesome player, whether it's in coverage or as a tackle specialist in the middle of the Bucks defense. Levante David has combined incredible athleticism, range, and intelligence to become one of the best linebackers in the NFL today. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing him on prime time and showcasing his ability. He's getting a little bit up there in age, but he has not slowed down. Last year was one of his best seasons yet. At number two, Eric Kendricks of the Minnesota Vikings. Kendricks had his breakout season last year. As a run defender, there are not many better. He is excellent as a blitzer. He has very good coverage skills. And I think he last year took that next step in terms of the IQ of the game. And that's why he was able to look quicker on film because he was diagnosing things so quickly. And that's what it really is about the linebacker position. Like all these guys I've discussed, If you're able to diagnose it quickly, you don't have to be the fastest. You don't have to be the quickest. You don't even have to be the strongest. But if you are there before anybody else, you're probably better than everybody else. And that's the case with Eric Kendricks. Along with his physical traits of agility and strength, Eric Kendricks is number two. At number one, the best linebacker in the game today off the ball is Darius Leonard. Darius Leonard is just a playmaking machine. I mean, the guy is a tackle machine. The guy is a sack machine. He's a forced fumble and interception machine. When it comes to turning the football over, when it comes to making a play in the passing game, when it comes to just disrupting an offense, Darius Leonard is the best off the ball linebacker in the game. I think he could play in any scheme. 
I think he can basically do anything you ask him to do. And that's speaking to the complete game, running game, passing game, blitzing, coverage. Darius Leonard's the man, man. He's the best in my opinion. And I do think with the injuries, it's caused him to not get as much credit as he should, but just look at the stats. I mean, the guy fills up the stat sheet every year. It's insane. This guy's the best linebacker in the game and probably will be for the next few years. Those are my top 20 linebackers in the NFL right now going into 2020. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Who's the best linebacker in the game today and who is on your top 20? It's Mitch. Peace.